Paul says that our momentary light afflictions are nothing to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us in 2 Colossians chapter 4. Welcome to tonight's Bible study. He said that the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that aren't seen are eternal. That's how chapter 4 ends, and it's a lot to think about. Our momentary light afflictions are nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Paul opens his chapter, and we actually added the chapter divisions much later, but Paul starts off this section and said that uh, we are partakers of God's mercy. And yet those that are perishing have veiled eyes and they can't see the God of mercy. When the gospels preach them that Satan is veiling their eyes, Satan has a great influence over their life. They can't see. They can't hear, they're enthralled in their sin. And it's a terrible place to be. And so the God of this world, which is Satan, has ensnared them and is not allowing them to see the truth. And yet we, with unveiled eyes, should be pray, praying that the scales fall off of those that we love, that the scales fall off their eyes, even as the scales fell off the eyes of Saul and he became Paul. Praise the Lord for Paul and praise the Lord for this message tonight. And so we uh, need to be walking the light and proclaiming the light into the darkness. The Bible says the light shined into darkness, but the darkness did not comprehend it. it said that in uh, John. Uh, and so it's all through prayer. It's all through prayer. And the Lord can tear down every wall. So we pray for those that we love, that they come to the end of themselves, and that they cry out to the Lord. We need to pray. Everything through prayer and supplication, we make our requests made known to God. I'll tell you that is one area of my life that I need to focus more diligently on is more time in prayer, more time meditating and focusing because it's in those times of prayer and the meditation and focusing that God really reveals to us what his will is for our life. We start praying that and we start seeing it come to pass because we're praying God's will. Will God's will come to pass? Better believe it. You better believe it. But he wants us to come in line with that so that we will be a blessing for him and for the kingdom of God. And so I lift you up uh, to the Lord. And I just ask that you would give your life fully over to the will of God. Uh, we uh, opened, I, the beginning of my Bible study tonight was in the book of Kings, and in the book of Kings, uh, Ahab, uh, the king of Israel, <laughs> had inquired of the Lord about a battle. And uh, as it was, the word of the Lord came to him 
and the word wasn't good. Uh, and yet he wouldn't accept that word. He had 400 prophets that would tell him what he wanted to hear, but God's prophet told him, this is it. Your life is required of you. Uh, you're not going to uh, make it through this battle. And he disguised himself, and yet an archer found him anyway. Uh, they were trying to attack the king, and he even had the king of Judah, who was there fighting with him, wear his kingly garment, and he disguised himself so that they might fight against the king of Judah instead of him. And yet he was the one who died. And the king of Judah cried out. They knew it wasn't him. He wasn't the king of Israel. And that's all they were looking for. They were looking for the king of Israel. And he was slain. And uh, they just would not follow after God. And the northern country of Israel remember that we have two kingdoms the northern and the southern and the northern kingdoms made their own altar they worshiped their own gods they were worshiping Baal they were sacrificing their babies and uh, that was largely in part from uh, Jezebel had brought these strange gods in. And so it's a sad thing that they did. And God said that he would bless the northern ten tribes. They would just follow after him. And they didn't even go one king. The first king that was warned departed from God and did things the way that he wanted to because he wanted the power. He was consumed by power. And uh, just like the Lord of the Rings, the ring consumed the people because they wanted the power of the ring. This king's ring has consumed many a king in Israel and in Judah also. And we just need to be humble before the Lord and do things according to his word. I was meditating on this one thing today and that each man does what's right in his own eyes, especially when they don't know the word of God. You've got to take the time to know the Word of God so that we can live that Word out in our life. Take it in and live it out. That's what the Lord wants for us. Because then we have life, liberty, and prosperity in the Lord. And His blessings and not the curses. Is anybody in our country tired of the curses that are coming upon our country somebody was asking me this last weekend about the judgments and we're facing two judgments because the world is being judged because of the unrighteousness of the world but our country also is being judged so god's trying to wake up the world and we have pandemic we have tsunamis, we have volcanoes, and all kinds of things all throughout the world. Uh, I, I believe I just heard uh, India had several people die from uh, uh, cyclones. And uh, it's just on and on. These natural disasters are uh, growing more and more severe. The Bible says, even as the birth pangs of childbirth grow more severe, so 
well, those judgments before the end. And so worldwide, one fourth of all the world will die before the Lord starts to pour out his wrath on this earth, before the Lord starts to judge. The first four horsemen go out, and it's not, not the judgment of God, but it is the ignorance, the warring, the insolence of man. And it's all because of those things and all that's going to come upon the world that brings apart about this, this first uh, one-fourth of the world dying that God's going to say enough is enough. And the three-fourths that's left, one of those people will be the Antichrist. And He'll turn the focus of this world on killing the Jews. He's going to have a lying piece with them and then turn and uh, show his true colors and try to kill all of the Jewish people. And that is when God is going to step in and start pouring out his wrath on this world. And he will come back and set things in order because we're not doing a good job doing that. We're not holding sin at bay, but we're cowering underneath it. And even in the church, perpetuating sinful behavior. Because God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. He's not saying the worldly people, but he said, my people were called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And some are. But we need to continue. And we need it to explode. We need to be crying out to God for his mercy that the that these terrible things could be held at bay and we can see another harvest before the end, which is very near. So let's pray for that. And I pray for the Lord's blessing to be upon you and upon your families. And I also pray for the Lord's blessing to be upon the USA that the fear of the Lord would again be known in our land. Pray that in Jesus' name, and I lift you up. Praise God. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.